Hi everyone, Mosmo here from the Blue Root team. And today I have some super exciting video to share with you. In today's video, what I wanna show you is Zoho for insurance brokers. So it's something we've worked on for many years. We have a bunch of clients that use systems similar to this. And what I wanna show you in today's video is how the system works, how you can utilize Zoho if you're an insurance broker. And a lot of this you can do yourself. And so in today's video, I'll walk you through what the CRM should look like, what other apps in the Zoho suite or ecosystem that we see a lot of insurance brokers using, and a bunch of the best practices. So as always, please like, comment, subscribe. Below, you'll see a link to my office hours. I'd love to meet all of you. There's more and more people coming every week. You can chat about our insurance solution. You can ask us any questions about anything in this video or anything Zoho in general. See you in the video. All right, so let's get into this. So first off, what I'll mention is, if you're coming onto the insurance product, or if you're an insurance broker looking to utilize Zoho, I would first off encourage you to buy the enterprise version of Zoho or Zoho One. So the focus of this demo is gonna be for PNC, home and auto type thing, or type insurance companies. So that's what you'll see a lot of in here. I'll talk a little bit about commercial and home and auto, and then I'll kind of do another video about different types of insurance. So as you can see, when you first log in, we've done a bunch of stuff to make it more relevant for an insurance broker, right? So when you first log in, there's a couple reports on the homepage. These are very easy to make. I'm not gonna go into great detail on the reports. I'm more gonna go over the architecture and some best practices when you're setting this up. Number one, you can see along the top here, we have contacts, accounts, policies, carriers, but you'll notice no leads. So in a lot of our systems, we get rid of leads. And the reason for that is we put it all into contacts. If you're doing any commercial style business, contacts and accounts work really well together versus leads. And so the way we separate it is when you go into contacts, you'll see here, if I open one up, we keep it very simple inside of the contacts. So you're gonna wanna go through and actually customize the layout, which I'll show you in a minute at a high level to get it simplified. But we have a contact type. So it can be a lead, a current client, or an underwriter. And so that contact type drives how you kind of interact with the person. So when someone first comes in from the web, they'll auto be marked as lead. Then as you create a policy and you close a policy, they will become a current client. And you can also make them an underwriter. So that's something that we see a lot of people use in our systems. So this is just a simple drop down. And what you can do with this is then you can have, you can make views here. So you could have a view for my active prospects. You could sort it in kind of a Kanban or a list view. And so everyone in this view, if you hit edit on it, you'll see that the contact stage is A, B, C, and you can also add in that they're a lead. So the type of contact is a lead. And so this allows you to separate out the database from leads and current clients. So by getting rid of leads, it simplifies things. You can now have everything in one module. So you just go to contacts, you can toggle by prospects or leads or current clients or underwriters, whatever you want. So that's kind of the first tip I would say to everyone. And it's definitely really handy. Now, a lot of our PNC style clients utilize the system for lead management. Right? And so this system is really good for lead management. You can integrate it with your website. So if someone writes in online, I'll show you how to do that at a high level in Zoho Forms. If someone writes into your website, you can either parse them through a parsing software and bring them in, or you can utilize Zoho Forms. I'd recommend the latter. And then by default, I'd recommend creating them in the need to contact stage. And so now someone comes in, they're in the need to contact stage. That's the default stage. And what you can do out of this is you can then drip or have some drip automation that goes off of this. So you can create a workflow, which I'll show you at a high level. That workflow can then say, if they're in the stage need to contact, send this email, then that email, then this email. Once you change them, attempted to contact once or quoted or contacted in progress, and you can customize these statuses. We've had a lot of clients that customize them in certain ways. This is kind of what we recommend, at least as a baseline or a foundation. You can customize these, but the idea here is these stages denote where a lead is in your process. And so these stages are what drive this page. So when your salespeople come in here, they can actually come in here and look at, okay, where are all my leads? And then when they send a quote, they can move it here. And when it's one, we'll auto move it there. I'll talk about that in a minute. But for the lead management part, definitely set up a stage like I have. Set up some fields here for the insurance type. What type of insurance are they looking for? Maybe the current carrier and stuff that they're with if they tell you that information. 
If they have some auto details, feel free to put that in. So these are custom fields we make for people. Home details, communication links. So we organize all of the phone number and the email and all of that in one section. So I'd recommend you do that as well. It's just very easy to find. Some preferred language, things like that. And then this probably won't be relevant for you. For some of our clients, we have an integration with a BMS. But in summary here, I would say keep the page simple have the relevant data about what type of insurance they want and teach your salespeople how to use notes so this is oftentimes what we do where you now have the contact you now have the stages teach people how to write the notes so when you click here on notes you can simply write one like talk to massimo he isn't interested and then hit save as an example you can also tag your colleagues on these notes with the at symbol all of that jazz they'll get an email notification so this is kind of step one and when you do this there's all kinds of automation you can make in the back end. And I'll kind of show you at a high level what that's like, but I'd recommend having some drip and we typically do around those stages. So depending on the stage they're in, you should be dripping them at some sort of frequency. It should get more aggressive as the frequency or sorry, as the timeline of the communication gets longer. And when I say aggressive, it should be like more, okay, it seems like you're not interested. Are you the right person to talk to? Is there someone else? Uh, should I move on? Things like that instead of just, hey, can we chat? But that's all back here in the workflow rules section. And so when you create a new workflow, uh, and if I go to contacts here, and if I just say test and workflow, so I'll go ahead and hit next. Now you can say on record action, on edit of that stage. So we'll say when the stage is modified to the value needs to contact or attempted to contact one as an example. Then you can send out an email, right? And then you can also set a scheduled action. X amount of time after, send out this email. X amount of time after that, send out this email. And you can do up to five scheduled actions in here. So you can kind of really spread them out. And this is something we put a lot of strategy into working with clients. And if you already kind of know how your clients would respond, feel free to create these. So this is definitely something that you should look at as you're building out your, your uh, insurance tool. So that's contacts, right? So remember in contacts, we have leads and we have current clients. Accounts, the way we set it up is like for businesses or households, however you want to frame it. So an account is a collection of many contacts and many policies. So you can see here, Brittany's consulting business is an account and they can have policies attached to them. So you can have the auto policy and the group benefit policy attached to it. That's what accounts is. And any note or note that you write in the policy or in the contact roll up into the account. So the account is kind of the top of the hierarchy. Then we have policies. So policies, our system does a really good job um, and, and what we've helped people with is manage kind of the life cycle of their policy, right? And so I would encourage you to make stages here along the top. We have other videos that we can link below on how to make those stages, but essentially make custom stages about your policies or, or how your policies work through the sales cycle. And now if I go into a policy, you can see here, here are all the stages along the top. Keep it very simple in the policy. Like you don't wanna have too much clutter in here. So you're gonna have the type of insurance, closing date, insurer name. So this is actually a lookup into the carrier module, which is typically a rename of the vendor module that we do. So you can see nationwide. So now you have this. And then as you go through, I would encourage you to add as much information as you can in here to actually keep track of major things on the policy. So obviously this isn't a management system. It's not gonna actually send stuff to the insurer or anything like that, but you should keep the amount, the deductible, the liability limit, uh, the renewal date, the closing date. So things like that to keep track of what's going on in the policy. Then attached to the policy, you can have notes, attachments, emails, all of that is kind of out of box with Zoho and, and we can help you set that up if you need. Probably the last thing that I wanna talk about inside of the CRM. So now you have the lead management, with some workflows, if the policies. I would also say that reports are really important. So obviously renewals are a big part of insurance. So we ha we set up all kinds of policy renewal reports in here. So as an example, uh, if I hit edit on this, this will show you all your policies that are, the renewal date is in the next 90 days. So if I just click on a, a random policy here and I put the renewal date in a couple days, then I go to reports. You'll see here that this policy will show up here. And the neat thing with this is you can actually set it up so that uh, it can actually send to your inbox. So if you're not the type of person that's gonna log in here a lot and you just wanna use it for renewal management, if I go back to reports here, I can actually set up a scheduled report. You can create a new report scheduler, choose the report you want to schedule. So you wanna do the renewal report. Then you can choose how you receive it, when it starts and how often you receive it. 
So this is a really handy feature inside of the system that allows you to kind of put on autopilot getting all of your reports. So that's kind of the general setup that you should do inside of an insurance focus system and mostly for the personal lines, right? So for home and auto, that is like very key to set it up like this because they're kind of high volume. So you're going to create your contacts, you're going to create your policies, you're going to create your reports, create some drip automation in the contacts. Now I want to show you a couple other things if you're kind of more commercial focused or just kind of online lead management. So there's also another app inside of the Zoho ecosystem called Zoho Forms. This is a great app to create uh, inbound lead forms or inbound just data collection. So you can see I'm editing a form here. I can drag and drop all kinds of fields over from the left into the actual content of the form and collect information from the client. I can then further integrate that into the CRM. So by hitting integrate here, I can integrate all that data back into the CRM. So whether it's a lead form that you want to put on your website, first name, last name, email, you can send that into the CRM as a contact with the contact type as lead, as I showed you. And so you go through this process, you would say contacts, and then you map all the fields, last name to last name, first name to first name, etc. So you go through this whole process and you send it into the CRM. You can also use this, and we see a lot of insurance companies using it for kind of more commercial focus forms. So you can see we have one here where it can be much more detailed. So you can have like the revenue, what percentage of revenue is generated in Canada, and you can have many pages that people have to go through. So these forms are a bit more labor intensive to create, but once they're created again, it can all come back into the CRM and actually autofill a bunch of information. So I would encourage you to get into the Zoho Forms application. It can be used for a bunch of things that you send out to clients or just online forms that clients can write into you about. The other app, if you're looking to come into Zoho as an insurance broker that you should check out is Zoho Sign. So this app is accepted by majority of the insurance carriers that we know of. It's basically like DocuSign, right? So if I open this up, you can upload all kinds of policy documents into here. You can send it out for signatures by hitting upload from your computer. You can upload a bunch of uh, a bunch of PDFs, a bunch of documents into here. And then it's as simple as kind of drag and drop, right? So once you upload a document in here, then you drag their signature field, you drag their initial field, et cetera, send it out. And then it can actually automatically get signed and notify you when it is signed. So there's a few settings you should probably set up when you're doing this. So if I go in here, you can do the notification settings. So when do you want to be notified when something happens, when the document's viewed or when it's signed or whatever. You can also set up organization settings. So fill out all of this information. Profile settings, that's important because you can put your signature and all of that in here. And there's also an email template area. So you can actually customize all of these templates that go out to people. So you can put your own branding and your own style on them. But in short, this app is really important. So if you're trying to get off the ground as an insurance broker, obviously feel free to reach out to us. But if you want to try to DIY, the idea is take your CRM, declutter it, get rid of leads and sales orders and all that stuff, work orders, have contacts, accounts, policies, and carriers. And carriers is vendors that you rename policies is deals or potentials that you rename. Clean up the contact like I showed you at the beginning of the video, simplify it. Clean up the policy as well or the deal potential, simplify it. Make sure you have pertinent details about your insurance type. Is it home? Is it auto? Is it commercial? What's the premium? What's the deductible? What's the renewal rate? All of that. Then make sure you have proper reports and automation. So if you want to drip people based on their stage or based on their date, there's a lot more you can do there. I showed you kind of the tip of the iceberg, but that'll at least get you started as an insurance broker. The reports, make some policy renewal reports or new lead reports, very easy to do. I have some videos below on how to do it. I kind of showed you how to schedule them. Feel free to do that. Then feel free to move into the ecosystem a bit. A lot of our brokers get a ton of value off of forms. Feel free to make some, integrate it back. I have full videos on how to integrate it. I showed you kind of a high level, integrate it back into the CRM. So now you have your online presence figured out, maybe your commercial form all coming back into the CRM. You now have a CRM that's organized, contacts, accounts, policies, all of that. Then move into sign, send out your documents, all of that. There's probably five or six more applications that you may find value of as an insurance broker, but I would encourage you to start here. You're gonna get a ton of ROI on it. I really hope you got some value out of this video and enjoyed it. Feel free to like and comment below. Join my office hours. I'm happy to chat more about this. We've obviously done implementations because every insurance broker is different that are much larger than this, some much smaller, right? So feel free to reach out. I'm happy to guide you 
and uh, thank you for watching. Thank you.